draft board update is live on pff.com your top 100 players in the nfl draft yes sir and the player that is now number one overall yes sir is one of the biggest risers preseason he was what 29th 29th now the number one overall player explain his ascent aiden hutchinson michigan defensive end um he played better football, <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the ascent. No, I mean, he went from, and honestly, he kind of changed who he was like let, He even said that I believe on the podcast when we had him on that he lost weight this off season. Yeah. He went from a guy who was kind of a tweener between the tackles. Like a, it was more of a three, four defense event and almost in his usage and body type. Like he was six, six, 275, 280 long arms, two gapper type, you, you, the way he's utilized in that defense, gets down to 260, plays exclusively off the edge, gains some juice off the line of scrimmage, and doesn't really lose any of that power that he's known for. And so he takes his grade into the stratosphere, highest graded defensive end in college football this year, and obviously had the broken leg le in, early on last season, didn't get to really show, and I think that was a big part of him being at 29th, like just purely what I saw on tape was probably a little bit better than 29th, but like coming 149 snaps and then you break a leg, miss the rest of the season. You're going to have to see what that guy's going to be yeah. when he comes back. And oh, what was Aiden Hutchinson when he came back? An absolute monster. I mean, you didn't have to watch much more than the Ohio State game to realize what kind of a talent this guy is. Just 15 pressures against two tackles that are graded very well, have graded very well so far this season. Not a lot of guys got the better of him. Shit, even David Ajabo in the same game didn't get the better of those two tackles the way Aiden Hutchinson did to that degree. Uh, so yeah, Aiden Hutchinson. At that point, like I said, you're the number one. He's the number one player in the class. Like there's, I have very little doubt that he will be impact pass rusher at the next level. No other Michigan player in that game had more than three total pressures. Ajabo was one of them, and he had 15 total pressures. I don't think. <coughs> God bless you. Excuse me. I don't think this stat can be said enough. The Ohio State Sorry. offensive line has not allowed more than 13 pressures to any team this season. Yeah. Aiden Hutchinson had 15 by himself. Yeah, That is absolutely insane. And you go back to his 2019 tape, he was one of the few edge defenders that got home against Tristan Wirfs. Yeah. That matchup is one to turn on, turning on that all 22 from 2019. I am not surprised he is number one overall. Another I mean, big elite, elite trade, elite production. Yeah. What do we want? If, and he, if he tests as much as well as people say he's going to test, it's yeah. not even going to be close. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be close. Charles Cross. Mississippi State offensive tackle, preseason draft board 60, now up to nine. And he has not just been a riser for you. Yeah. He's been a riser for everyone. Love, everyone is all in on Charles Cross. Yeah. And, I mean, you got, you don't have to look too much further than just PFF grade. 64.4 last year. And for him to be ranked 60th with a 64.4 grade tells you, like, what kind of athlete we're working with for an offensive tackle. 6'5", 3'10", was a former five-star recruit. The guy can move. But he allowed 44 pressures because that was his first year as starter. Playing the SEC, pass-heavy offense is difficult. This year, 86.7 overall grade. Massive leaps in run blocking, pass blocking. And you see it again, 719 pass blocking snaps. The dude has played a full NFL season's worth of pass blocking snaps and then an add-on about 200 more. Like, that is tested. And he's held up against the best edge in the country at that point. Uh not too much more to worry about as a prospect. Like you feel good when you see guys that again, that level of athleticism, that level of production, those are the guys draft highly. Two linebackers that have risen significantly, Utah's Devin Lloyd from 57 to 21, Nicobe Dean from 23 to 11. Do you think ultimately both go in the first round? <sighs> now don't, I, I already locked in Nicobe Dean. So yeah. yes, ultimately one <laughs> does. Devin Lloyd has not made the lock segment yet, but he was debated this week. I'll give you a little spoiler. It's not him, but he was debated because he has played elite football and truthfully kind of did last year too. It was just, shit, all the Pac-12 dudes had four games, five games, 340 snaps last yeah. year. He's played over twice that this year. Like, you didn't get a season on him. This year you did. He's probably the most complete linebacker in terms of you know, size, prototypical physical traits, athleticism, you know, taking on blocks, rushing the passer, coverage, man coverage, zone coverage, uh, just the total package for the linebacker position. The only thing is like that's kind of lacking is he doesn't – he's not going to test like Devin White. You know, he's not going to run a 4-4. He's not going to be that that kind of athlete. But he's still a damn good athlete. So at that point, yeah, I think he – right now, if I had to say, I think he does end up in the first round. But, again, not the first round lock segment 
this week. That's fair enough. I think that's fine. I think these linebacker, this linebacker class is sneaky good. Yeah. N'Kobe Dean, like Devin it. Lloyd, Chad Muma. Those are all three guys that have graded really, really, really well. well this season. It'll be interesting to see how they test. I think Dean will obviously be like the most polarizing guy. I think he could do some absolutely absurd things at the combine. But man, Christian a lot Harris of like kind productive of the wild, guys, right? Alabama's like, Christian Harris kind of the wild card in there in that he has not graded out well, but he is an elite athlete. And so he remains to be seen what he'll look like. Are any of out. the Wisconsin guys draft eligible? Yeah, I think they both are. Yeah. Sam Bourne and Chanel. Chanel. Um, Chanel was a debatable for the top 100, didn't end up making the top 100, but he is in run defense. I mean, certain schemes, if like you're not asking much out of them in coverage, where it's just like maybe like man heavy teams, he could, he could excel. So I think he's fringe top 100 player. For Jamison Williams, who's the next guy on your list, he's the 14th overall player on PFF's draft board, Alabama wideout, super speedster, former four star that transferred from Ohio State. Why is he not just a speedster? Because I don't. No one wants to fall for just a speedster anymore. People mm-hmm. realize that. Why mm-hmm. is he not just a speedster? He's got some shake to him. He's not uh, not straight liney. Um, it's interesting watching him play, and this is a terrible comp. I hate this comp, but I'm going to say it. He reminds me of just like a taller Deshaun Jackson, taller version of Deshaun Jackson, and that is just like the level of speed and just kind of like Smooth. one, yeah, the, and the smoothness of his speed. Mm-hmm. It's not like he doesn't look like he's he's just gliding and he's just that much faster than you. And it doesn't matter how hard you're trying, he's still going to outrun you. Like he's still got whatever gear it takes, he's going to get to that gear. And that's I mean, you've seen it this year. He's averaging twenty point six per catch in the SEC. That's that doesn't happen a lot. You know? Like Henry Ruggs was not doing that even. So yeah, Jameson Williams and it's like the reason he rose is because you didn't see him. You know, we, we didn't get to see him much prior to this year. The dude had 15 career catches at Ohio State before he transferred. Well, and why do you think he said that? Why was that? I mean, they got three all-stars there, man. That's yeah. uh, I wouldn't put – like what I'm saying is that's not a knock on Williams. In my no. Opinion. I think they have talent. Top, they're, they're, their top five receivers are all insane. you got Julian Fleming, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, there is a lot of talent at Ohio State, so no knock there. I mean, yeah, but the, he's uh, gone to Bama and been – he's been better than Mechie, right? And Mechie was this yes. coveted – Bama receiver that a lot of people were in their preseason draft boards putting in the top 50, top 40. Williams has outperformed him starting, you know, soup to nuts. Yeah, people looking at breakout age, which I do like for a lot of positions. You, When a guy has a unique situation like a Jameson Williams, I tend to forgive a later breakout age. You know, like when you're behind two other guys who will more than likely go in the first round. Maybe three other guys. Possibly. Then, then I'm going to say, hey – We'll, we'll let that one slide. The next guy on this list is probably the one I'm most nervous about with this ascent just because it's happened so fast. Yeah. But David Ajabo, who didn't start playing football, I think, until like 2017, 2018. That's, a, that's like a big part of why I believe in it. Yeah. You know? But continue. Only played 26 snaps in 2020. This year has played 476 snaps for Michigan, has an 89.3 pass rushing grade, 39 pressures on the year. He has three or more pressures in every game since week five. Mm-hmm. He has been... Impro- literally improving every snap with how much football he's played. I mean, you saw that yeah. special on game day before the Michigan Ohio State game. He said he's still learning the rules. He didn't understand why people spiked the ball a couple of weeks ago to stop the clock. Like, this guy is legitimately fresh. Yeah. And that we always talk about, you know, you talk about a lot about this with age, right? Like, oh, he's a younger mm-hmm. player and he's already performing well. I think it's very similar with experience, right? Like, and this is a very inexperienced player that is already dominating college offensive tackles Mm -hmm. maybe he's not a guy that hits the ground in a full sprint in the nfl i think it's a guy that could develop but still this is one of those guys where like man what he could get to in the future could be absolutely insane yes he's born in nigeria moves to scotland when he's seven comes to new jersey as a sophomore in high school and plays (laughs) i want to know like how big he was because he's played soccer when he got here Mm -hmm. and obviously like plays soccer from being in Scotland, that's probably the game everyone played. Not a lot of football going on in Scotland. But plays soccer, plays basketball, and then his junior year starts playing football. And so that is the basically genesis of how long this guy has, and like you said, doesn't even know about playing football. Five years he's been watching playing the game. That's it. And so for him to, again, break out this late, 
I can forgive a guy because this is the fifth year of football, and he's been elite when he has been on the football field. Like I said, three pressures every, in all those games, 89.3 pass rushing grade, and then the tools, 6'5", 250, long arms, burst off the edge. Already has some actually nice pass rushing moves in his arsenal that, like, for them to be doing that this quickly, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. He's also only 20, I'm, 21 years old, right? Like, he's still, yeah. like, in addition to inexperience, he's also a very young player as well. Man, what Michigan has done, though, to develop, recruit, groom, Specifically, defensive line talent. Every position but quarterback. Has Well, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I agree because Daxon Hill, they have some talent in the secondary yeah. still. But this defensive line has been insane. Maurice Hurst, Rashawn Gary, Aiden Hutchinson, Quiddy Pay, um, Chase Winovich. They have had so much, like, legit yeah. athletes and Charles legit, Wormley. like, productive players. It has been Jim Harbaugh. Shout out to Jimmy. Before we get to the more risers here, right now at PFF, you can get 40% off any PFF subscription using code Cyber40. Cyber40 now through December 6th. If you listen to Mike and I all the time, right, and you're like, oh man, love all the grades they bring up, all that shit. You can go to pff.com right now. Cyber40 gets access to all that stuff, all the locked article content, Mike's draft guide that comes out in January. It's going to be an absolute treat. Make sure you go to pff.com, use promo code Cyber40. Kenny Pickett will be talked about as this Jenny, no, Jenny, who the fuck is Jenny? Joe Burrow riser at quarterback position, right? Yeah. A guy that no one had pegged as even in the conversation with Spencer Rattler before this season, but man, at Pitt this year, a 92.3 PFF grade in what his fifth season there at Pittsburgh. He has been phenomenal. You said it, I think on the Chris Collinsworth podcast, he's played like the best quarterback in college football. Yeah. And that's just a fact. It is it's just a fact. And, just and a he's fact. been, he's been very good. And now there are aspects of his game that I worry about translating to the NFL, but He's 6'3", 220 with a big arm. Uh, like that's, those are good starting points for translating to the NFL. The physical tools about his game will translate to the NFL. He's got some mobility to his game. Not a runner per se, but can make plays outside the pocket. And he didn't have a bad game. He didn't have a bad game this season. His lowest passing grade is a 70.1. That is a better, worse game than even Joe Burrow's coming out. And Joe Burrow, we talked about, didn't have a bad game. Kenny Pickett. All... All games that should have been enough to win for his respective team, obviously his defense let him down. That's why I'm saying he should have been, should be in the Heisman conversation. Now I think it's good at Aiden Hutchinson, but Kenny Pickett should have been number two. I am confident that Kenny Pickett will be talked up as maybe a quarterback QB one, right? I, I don't yeah. you think he's I, gonna get moved into that conversation? It, it will be I mean, I think it'll be inside the senior bowl, honestly. Yeah. He hasn't accepted his invite to the senior bowl, though. He could be going to the East West Shrine. We don't know that. We don't know that. He could Aren't, be skipping it all together. I, although I think this is the year if you're a quarterback. You, you got to go. You got to go. You have to go. Penn State's Arnold Ebichetti. That's how you pronounce it. I asked him himself. He's a friend of the show. He is another guy that has not played football for a long time, but has been dominant for Penn State this year. I think he's been one of the more impressive pass rushers from a skills perspective this year. Like you look at yeah. Aiden Hutchinson's fucking insane, and he's the number one overall pick. But like, the athleticism and stuff isn't the first thing you're bringing up with Arnold Ebiketti. You're bringing up the fact that he's using his hands well. He's got multiple moves. I like Ebiketti a lot. He and Jermaine Johnson, the Florida State edge, are two guys that aren't getting talked about a ton mm -hmm. in this class, like Ojabo, Hutchinson, Thibodeau, Karloftis. But they are both really productive players this year and, like you said, a big riser this year as well. Yes, and honestly, I could see him ending up in the first round, depending on testing. Really? He's been he's got a test. that good. He's got a test. test. Testing with him will be big because I think he's – a a plus athlete, but obviously combine reveals all. So 90.5 pass rushing grade this year, and he was very good at Temple, but he was kind of a one-year breakout in the shortened season, only 340 snaps at Temple last year with 88.3 overall grade. He's a senior, 90.5 pass rushing grade. I believe he'll be at the Senior Bowl. He accepted the Senior he did, Bowl invites. He, did. he accepted the Senior Bowl invite. 52 pressures this year, and before it was Hutchinson clowning the Ohio State tackles, he had five pressures in that game. He was, did very well himself uh, against Nicholas petit Freire. So, yeah, Arnold Abichetti, honestly, I feel bad about putting him at 37. He probably shouldn't be even higher than that. Don't you feel that Aiden Hutchinson should personally apologize to Jackson Kirkland and Nicholas petit Freire for, like, single-handedly? Costing them money. Costing them money and dropping their draft Probably stop? should. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the— Just give him, I mean, Freire, first overall pick. If Freire, money, say he, like, sat out that game. Yeah. His draft stock stays high. <laughs> like now that people are going to turn on that Making tape, injury. like what the. And so much of that, too, we haven't talked about the specifics a ton. We're just like, oh man, he was a game wrecker. But so much of it was 
him oversetting and Aiden Hutchinson just going right inside. He was just countering, going inside, going inside, going inside. They had no no option. They had no option to stop him. Kyler Gordon, the next riser here, Washington cornerback. Also, um, according to Trent McDuffie, the most athletic person he's ever seen in his life. Yeah. Kyler Gordon. Two-time Freaks List member. Moves, moves different. Moves absolutely different in the secondary for Washington. Yeah, and so a guy who, again, we're going to say it with like all the Pac-12 guys, 134 snaps last year. It, hard to get a good handle on a guy in what should be his biggest year. That was his junior year last year, or I guess redshirt sophomore. And he only plays 134 snaps. So you see the skills, athleticism, six foot, 200, prototypical size, everything. And then this year, see it translate to a football field. 89.6 coverage grade. 21 of 41 targets for only 243 yards all season long. And he did it in a more versatile role than even Trent McDuffie, who is his teammate there at Washington, the other cornerback who we're super high on. But Kylie Gordon's the guy who's kind of going in the slot at times, playing on the outside. They wanted him around the football more. 79.8 run defense grade. Very good in that regard. Very good in run support. Good tackler. Top 50 player after being unranked in the preseason. Couple more risers here, and then we'll get to some of the fallers. Don't want to spend too much time with the fallers. They still got opportunities. Yeah, we just, just gotta give them just give them Ken, some shout Ken, outs. Kenneth Walker, the Michigan State running back, who was in the conversation for the Heisman after that big game against yeah. Michigan in East Lansing. He has been phenomenal for Michigan State. I think there's a good chance with the bowl game that he could break PFF records in yards after contact per attempt, force miss tackles per attempt, all these things. He has been exactly what PFF looks for in the running back position in terms of creating yards. That's yards after contact, forcing missed tackles, all that stuff. I do think that he's in the conversation for running back one, but I don't think he'll be the consensus RB1. I think a lot of people will flock to Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller. There's still a lot of time left. The testing will obviously change a lot of these things. But right now, Kenneth Kenneth Walker, Walker. PFF's RB1. It's Kenneth Walker. Um, Yeah, I mean, what he's doing at Michigan State, and I know they added people in the transfer portal, but it's just – it shouldn't be done at Michigan State, you know? Like, with what the talent they had around him, he should not be playing as well. I mean, I mean that offensive line runs. has not graded well this year. Yeah. 89 missed tackles, forced missed tackles in the year on 262 attempts. I mean, just anything you want, he can do. He's an all-around back. And 53 on the PFF board because, shit, we hate running backs. True. But this is about – it's about – we're not going to put too many running backs that much higher than 53. I said this was – a a running back class without a true like difference maker I think Walker can be a true difference maker at the next level do you know the two people in college football that lead in force miss tackles one is Kenneth Walker the other is it's Bijan Malik Willis Malik oh. Willis Malik Willis has the second most force miss tackles of surprising. any player in the country last one here and this is a guy that you've thrown on my radar late Sky Moore whereas number 24 wide receiver for Western Michigan listed at five foot ten, one ninety five, be interesting to see if he hits that five foot ten. But man, he has been this year's Deontay Johnson. This, right now. this year's Deontay Johnson. You're saying he's that good? Yeah, that good. Deon- this year's Deontay Johnson. 50, Sky Moore of Western Michigan, fifty fourth in the PFF board. True junior at eight hundred yards back as a true freshman. Obviously, last year only three ninety one, but not really on the radar because you know Western Michigan wide receiver putting up three hundred ninety one yards in a shortened season. Whatever monster this year just watch him as a route runner the burst he has leads all of college football 24 broken 26 excuse me broken tackles after the catch 12 in the last two games if you go back and watch the tape the last two weeks against northern illinois eastern michigan unguardable and i think he's going to run somewhere in the 4-4 range he looks like he has legit speed and now the size isn't going to be great but good ball skills there's really like that is the biggest knock on him because he went 8 of 13 in contested situations. Like, he's physical. Uh, there's not too much else to really, like, bash. Other than Some of the competition he, he was didn't going play good against competition. Was bad, yeah. Other than that, like, he's doing it and killing dudes when they're not – they can't hold his jock, obviously. But I was like, say the same thing about Deontay Johnson coming out, too. Yeah.